Chapter 4 is entitled, Where Am I? Susie opened her eyes when the warmth of the sun shining through the window touched her face. She looked around expecting to see her favorite posters that hung on her pink striped wallpaper. They weren't there. She looked over to the pink and white bookcase next to her desk and it wasn't there either. And where was her desk anyway? When Susie looked to the right where her grandmother had gone to sleep in the twin bed next to hers, there was no Granny Ella and no twin beds. What there was instead was a very big room with a very high ceiling and walls lined with books. In the center of the room was a large round wooden table above which hung a sparkling chandelier. There was a fireplace and over the mantel was a portrait of George Washington. Where could she be? In the White House. Huh. Let's see if you're right. What happened to her Harry Potter and Jonas Brothers posters? Susie did not recognize her bedroom. In fact, she did not even know if this was her bedroom. Just then, a tall, important-looking man in a dark blue suit stepped into the room and told Susie, The former First Lady will be with you in just a minute. She's saying goodbye to Mrs. Truman and will meet you here in the library shortly. The former First Lady, the library, saying goodbye to Mrs. Truman. Susie looked around and saw that she was standing in a formal-looking room with red, white, and blue curtains, chairs, and a couch. When the door opened and Susie looked in that direction, she saw a woman who she thought looked a lot like... The First Lady. The First Lady. Hmm. Mrs. Truman? Or maybe a different First Lady? Yeah. Let's see. She thought a woman who she thought looked a lot like Eleanor Roosevelt walking towards her. Ah. As the tall and stately woman began to speak, Susie realized it really was Mrs. Roosevelt, and she was bending down to shake her hand. It's so wonderful to meet you, Susie, said Mrs. Roosevelt. When I received your letter, I told Betty Eidstein, my personal secretary, to get in touch with you right away. I wanted to try to help you and your friends with this problem in your neighborhood. You are just as lovely as your letter, but a bit taller than I would have thought an almost eight-year-old would be. And look at those beautiful red shoes. Where did you get them? Oh, Mrs. Roosevelt, I'm so excited to meet you. Thank you so much for inviting me here to the White House. My Granny Ella once heard you speak and told me how amazing you were. She is the one who gave me my red shoes last night for my birthday. I wrote a report about you for school, and when this trouble started in my hometown, I knew you would know what to do. So tell me more about what's been going on, Susie. It all started a month ago when my best friend Lois Bernstein and her family wanted to join the Wynn Hall Country Club. That's the club my family belongs to. Lois said they got a letter telling them they would have to be put on a waiting list because there were no openings for new members. The worst part was the letter went on to say that the Bernstein should apply for membership at the Overhill Country Club, where there are many Jewish family like, families like you and where you might feel more comfortable. When we were talking about the letter at the lunch table, our other friend, Irene Barron, said, well, we just applied to the Wynn Hall Country Club last week, and my dad said he was told we would receive our membership cards in a few days. I'm planning to have my birthday party by the pool next month. Well, Mrs. Roosevelt, it reminded me of the time Marian Anderson was not allowed to sing at Independence Hall, and you did something remarkable when people discriminated against her. My granny says women who have the courage of their convictions make history, like you have, Mrs. Roosevelt. Do you think you are brave enough to speak out for what you believe in, Susie? Mrs. Roosevelt asked. It can be very scary to stand up to a whole group of people all by yourself. I'm not sure, but I'll try to be. Didn't you once must say you must do the things you think you cannot do? Oh, and by the way, I won't be alone. All of my friends are upset about this. We don't want any family to be treated this way. It's not fair. It's not American. Things like this are not supposed to happen anymore. What do you think I can do, Mrs. Roosevelt? The First Lady reached out for Susie's hand and looked deeply into her eyes. Susie, you remind me of myself. I'll bet we can come up with a plan to make history in your little town. My visit with President and Mrs. Truman is over, and I must be going. Do you have time to come with me to an important meeting I have to attend? It may give us some ideas. Susie remembered President Truman was the vice president when Mrs. Roosevelt's husband was president. When President Roosevelt died in 1945, 
the vice president became the president of the United States. Even though she was no longer the first lady, it was obvious Mrs. Roosevelt was still very close to the Trumans and still involved in politics. Susie was confused. How could she be in the Truman White House? Harry Truman was president in the late 1940s. Susie would have to go back in time to be visiting the White House during his preg presidency. And that wasn't possible, was it? Is it? What do you think, ladies? And they might have been from the shoes and how she slept with them. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, she might have, like, a hat, like, if you um, have your shoes on while you sleep, maybe you, like, get into a deep sleep. Like the last thing you said or something, like before you go to sleep? So maybe these shoes are magical. Mm -hmm. Magical. Yeah. Or, if the shoes aren't magical, what other explanation could it be that she's with Eleanor Roosevelt in 1948? It could be she's just having a... Dream. Uh, could be a dream. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Don't, think the don't know yet. Just as these thoughts were beginning to worry her, the former first lady took Susie's hand and they left the library. Susie turned to her and said, I can't believe I'm here with you, Mrs. Roosevelt. It's so wonderful of you to care about our town and its problem. This all feels like a dream but I know it's real. I can feel your hand in mine. I would be honored to go with you. Where do you think they go to this meeting? Paris. Could it be Paris, France? That's Where did we hear that, that somebody heard Mrs. Roosevelt speak in Paris, France? The granny. The granny. Yeah. The picture. Mm -hmm. I think we'll read one more, one more chapter before we take a break. You doing okay? Mm -hmm.